Hello friends, after watching this video, you are going to be surprised to know that most of the time derivative control action is not required at all to use in PID controller. Using all three action does not guarantee you a stable control system. Even sometimes derivative control action makes a PID controller a mess, particularly flow control. How? Let's find out. And I am then sure after watching this video, you are going to check all your PID controllers in your plant that if really derivative action is required or not. You may be having in your plant some feed control system or flow control system like a VFD fan feeding air to process or a VFD pump feeding some liquid to process. It may be a solid flow feed system like wave feeders or solid flow feeder feeding coal, limestone or fly ash to the process. All these control system falls in sub control system category which gets all commands from the main control system uh, from PLC, DCS or SCADA. These sub control system have their own control philosophy to control. And the status of these sub control system is monitored by a dedicated panel, be it VFD, SPRS, wave feeders or solid flow feeder or some other flow control system. These system only takes set pens from the DCS and PLC and report feedback signals like RPM, flow rate, etc. And uh, in some cases, some fall monitor signal to PLC and DCS. But all in all, these have their own control flows of be isolated from the main PLC and DCS. These control system basically flow controllers control or regulate some input to the process, be it air, chemical liquid, water, solid like coal, limestone, laterite, bauxite, fly ash, etc. Whatever it is. Now you must have noted these flow control system are supplied with only proportional and integral control action, no derivative control action at all. Have you thought any time why? Before we come to why, let's first understand what is the role of derivative action in PID controller. You must have come across this event many times at home when a water bucket is being filled from a water tap and you notice it is all flowing and then you suddenly jump to the water tap to turn it off. Yes, this is the derivative action you took. When you presumed or predict there may be a mess due to water overflowing outside the bucket. And accordingly, you took an action to avoid this mess. This action is called derivative action. Exactly the same way, derivative control action works when it encounters a sudden change in the rate of change of error. The derivative part in the PID controller moves the final control element in a such direction which reduces or makes the rate of change of error to be constant, not zero. And hence over the control to the proportional plus integral control action after doing the derivative part. Once the rate of change of error become constant, not zero, mind it. Derivative control action provides a kick start to the final control element to prevent the big overshoot of process variable beyond the set pan. Now in any flow measurement, we generally encounter in the C beat or orifice flow measurement, venturi or pitot tube flow measurement or solid dynamic weighing with a load cell. The signals from this sensor contain some high frequency noise superimposed over it. As we learn from the water bucket example, the derivative mode activates only when the rate of change of error keeps changing. Now the derivative action treats these noise in this process variable as continuously changing errors. So derivative action keep manipulating controller output and makes the system unstable and oscillate around the set pan which I don't require as these are noises not actual process variable fluctuation or reflection. Yes, a laminar flow in liquid can have a zero noise, but in practice it is not possible to have laminar flows in all kinds of liquids and solids. Of course, you can filter out these noises from the process variable with a low pass filter and damp it out the process variable. So you can use derivative action, but as long as you filter time constant is uh, shorter than one fifth of your derivative action. Here on this screen, you can see the behavior of a control loop with noisy process variable with then without derivative control action. Now you can imagine the effect of controller output on the final control element that is control wall with so much fluctuation. Here final control element is mostly a fan with VFD or a motorized control wall in the pipeline or some roti dosing wall in solid flow flow control. It will dance like anything and the amount of wear and tear you can only imagine. VFD fan or pump may immediately trip with DC overtage fault or something because of VFD cannot respond to these fast, faster changing set points. 
the connected motor cannot attain the set point quickly in a second or less. This is only why a flow or feed control system is not equipped with derivative control action. In fact, the majority of control loops in industry we usually encounter use only proportional plus integral control action. Proportional gives the control loop an immediate response as per the size of an error. And the integral mode eliminates the error offset after a load change in the process. However, this P plus I combination may take some time to be stable after process decimates, but it behaves smoothly and ensures lower wear tear on the final control element. That is why derivative control action is only used for the slow responding process where process value does not contain high frequency noise and when the signal is well damped and it is the flow signal which contains noises over it and creates problem. Temperature control loops normally have smooth measurement and long time constant. The process variable of temperature loop tends to be move in same direction for a longer time after any change. So its slopes can be used for predicting future errors. Therefore, temperature loops are ideal candidates for using derivative control action. Likewise, level measurement can be noisy for boiling liquids. However, if level measurement is smooth, then derivative control action can be used with low pass filter or with damping on the signal. Pressure control loops for liquids behave very much like flow loops. So, derivative action is not recommended here. Gas pressure control loop behave more like temperature loops, making them good candidates for using derivative control action. Actually, derivative control action makes the control loop a bit complex, but it does have its benefits only in special cases. If a control loop does not absolutely need derivative control action, don't use it. If only you have smooth process variable, then go for a derivative action. One more thing to keep in mind while using derivative action is do not use derivative control action where set point change is required frequently. Because set point change also creates a step change in process variable, so it activates derivative action due to change in rate of change of error. If you really need faster action, quick set point reach, then it may be used. Another thing which has been observed with this system is subcontrol system like VFD feed control system set point is feed from PLC and DCS PID block which makes a cascading effect on this control system. This cascading effect will have two PID tuning parameter sets now. One from uh, PID block in PLC DCS and other from the controller inside the subcontrol system. This can be understood from the screen behind. The output uh, from PLC DCS PID block is fed to the subcontrol system, which has got PID controller also. Now, this cascading effect of PID and PI controller inside VFD or control system. This arrangement makes the system worse, cyclic and unstable. So therefore, it is highly recommended not to connect these VFDs or subcontrol system with PID software block. Only set point is sufficient from PLC DCS and feedback parameter may be displayed on operator console. So take care of this note while configuring logic for a subcontrol system and ensure at your plan that any subcontrol system like VFD, SPR, SBI filter, solar flow filter or whatever which already we have inbuilt PI controller inside does not get set point from PLC DCS PID controller. Yes, there may be cascading of another control parameter which is finally being controlled or regulated by subcontrol system. In that case, it is okay to have cascaded uh, PID controllers. Friends, I think sure this video is going to help you make control loop stable at your plant. If you have any further query regarding PID tuning, you can post in comment section. Sure, we will discuss and learn more. Thank you. Goodbye. Keep watching. Keep sharing this channel. Bye-bye.